one. Um, oh, probably notifications in your record. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I need to apologise first for being late to my own podcast. <laughs> 25 minutes, some technical difficulties, but we're here now. Um, it's made, we'll give the people what they want. You have been cutting for a wee while. What is happening with that? What does your daily routine look like? So I have two different daily routines. So basically, I have a training and a non-training day. Um, so on my training day, I've eaten about 2,270 calories around that. So I generally have a meal before I train. And so I get up first, I walk to work with Lauren, get a coffee, come back. Um, you know, you have to get caffeine in there. Come back, have breakfast, then train. Um, I've been lucky enough to have keys to a gym. So but the vast majority of my stuff is done inside the gym anyway. Um, the gym's mainly just for trying to keep muscle mass. Um, then I come back, focus on getting 10,000 steps at least a day. I usually get about 16,000 because I don't have a car and I walk everywhere. <laughs> nah, because you've got short legs, maybe. <laughs> um, then I'd have lunch um, on training days. So it's, it's like mid-carb, then high-protein. Then about four hours later, I'd have my dinner. So around six o'clock, I'd have dinner. Um, again, that'd be like a high fat or a high high carb, um, high protein meal. And then I'd have like a snack before I go to bed. Um, it's well spread. I tried today. I'm not really that hungry, and I do live off a few monsters as well. <laughs> they, they suppress the appetite. Then on no idea. Huh? No idea what you did. Never touched the monster in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um. Then on non-training days, I would basically just skip breakfast and have a low carb. Uh, I'd fast until about one o'clock just because um, I like to have my food in the evening time because that's when I'm hungry. I'm never really hungry in the morning. Um, I'd have a low carb lunch, a high protein, and then my carbs start coming in later on in the evening. <clears throat> that's basically carbs, carbs, carbs later on. Yeah, later on in the day because I love carbs in the evening. I'd love to sit down and watch the football and just munch away and actually that's all right yeah it's, it's the, the taste factor of having some carbs later in the evening gives you something yeah. to look forward to so yeah bowl of, bowl of cereal two hours like an hour before bed unreal what, what cereal do you have i was in the cocoa puffs but then i'm i i uh i changed the nest quick because there's like per 30 grams there's like four grams of carbs less and it and it means more cereal so I'm having uh, porridge oats in the morning and I've been like experimenting with trying to mix it up like by putting in like different syrups or sauces or like <laughs> a, a I believe same. these skinny sauce looks vile <laughs> I'm telling you it, like it actually tastes spot on see hazelnut chocolate it's, it's a game changer um, mm. I put in a wee square of white chocolate. I usually put dark chocolate into my porridge. I put white chocolate just because I felt exotic. Um, but it, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I don't know if it's healthy or something, isn't it? It's it yeah, a little better. It just yeah, it just doesn't taste right. See, when you're used to something for so long, it just it doesn't taste right. No. Um, That's the same with me and the cream of rice before I train. It's always cream of rice, a scoop of protein. 100 grams of berries and 10 grams of dark chocolate. That's just a non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, mate, the cream of rice box in my head, I don't know what it's meant to be. It tastes really nice, but is it, a, is it like a it's breakfast? It's basically just like powderized rice. So, and like, do you know, do you know baby rice? Like what babies eat? Yeah, it's a bad day when you start eating. Same as that, eat. except like an adult version. But it's like flavor, right. you can get flavored versions of it, it's class. It's just like an oh. really easily digestible carb. What was the one you gave? It was caramel, wasn't it? Yeah, it was caramel. caramel. Oh, top notch. It was very, but like, are you meant to have like chicken or turkey burgers or stuff with or is it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> like chocolate favorite rice and then turkey burgers. <laughs> he said rice. So I'm like, I'll have that with my turkey burgers. And I was like, again, I don't know how I feel about it. I had Frank's hot sauce and turkey burgers with this cream of rice at the side. And it just made a very interesting combination. No, 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 no. No, it's like a rice pudding. 
Yeah. It's like, that was actually nice. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. It is. It's yeah. Nice. Didn't utilize it correctly. Yeah, exactly. When you make it right, it's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you're spot on. Uh, right, well, look, we'll get into the main topic of today's chat. Um, we're going to talk about getting back into the gym. So we have a date. The Irish people have a date. Uh, Finally. Yeah. Still a couple of weeks away, but uh, we have a date to go back to the gym. So obviously there's going to be people who haven't been near a gym for five months, upwards of five months, because we're only open for three weeks at Christmas, and you have the choice of pubs or gym. <laughs> it's, it's, the same, it's the same again, like, pubs or gym. <laughs> I know, open in the same day, and like, we'll get to that point later, but what advice would you say to someone who's going back to the gym for the first time in five months? So, well, like, you haven't been... Tr- you haven't been training or you have been training at home most people probably haven't because we all hit home workouts um yeah. but even if you have you'll still be fairly like uh, sensitive to exercise so straight off the bat you might want to take a little bit easier say if you already have a plan made there even if you have a coach the coach will know obviously to bring, bring you in slowly um and don't kill yourself all at once so yeah. if you're working with your set like obviously on your own homemade plan take like a deload first so what is a deload basically rather if you usually do three working sets just do two or lower the overall volume really yeah. so how much um how much like reps sets etc etc you do in each exercise just because you're going to be dying with doms otherwise <laughs> you won't be able to walk up the stairs after like the, <laughs> never mind coming down it. but doms are basically like delayed onset muscle soreness so basically just the pain in your muscles uh after you train and generally the first week back you'd be dying for a few days after it really, you can by a car for the oh yeah literally getting nailed by a bus i remember the first time i did my first program with you and i was training there before and then literally like when i started the program i was literally like i remember texting i was like i feel like i got hit by a bus <laughs> the dogs well, are something different i mean i, I think that's because you engaged your hamstrings for the yeah, first yeah, time you know, when she started squatting properly and deadlifting properly <laughs> and, and then obviously you add structure to your plan so try and have a split that you follow um if it's like a push pull legs or upper lower upper lower or something like that along them lines and then try and in, uh, bring in progressive overload to obviously make some progress yeah Nate, i think you touched on some very valid points that people kind of don't think about when they're going to the gym they just want to go and do everything end up so for a week is it there you're thinking about your bicep curls yeah <laughs> well yeah do a scoop of pre-workout try up for the five months of this by doing everything at once but yeah, exactly. uh, you're right uh, the just keeping some sort of minimum effective dosage by like literally doing the bare minimum. It's the one time you can get away with doing the bare minimum. And you, and and you get, get some maybe gains again. Oh, listen, you'll end up progressing with six weeks worth of normal progress within a week because you're so sensitive to it. Yeah, exactly. um, again, just sticking to our program, so having same or similar exercises each time that you train, and then as you said, progressing them each time the whole point in using a gym is pretty much to develop some form of strength or linear progression in your actual muscle mass so or drive those markers higher which means you need to get stronger so writing down what you're fucking doing the amount of people that go in and wing it and <coughs> just each week going oh i think i've done this i'm going to do this this week i'm feeling like that and as much as yes for the first couple of weeks you will get some form of adaptation three or four weeks in you're you're going to be stuck again so yeah yeah have a plan literally just get a little book like i have literally just like a notebook something similar something similar to that like and i just write down what i do or you can even get apps on your phone now because everyone's doing everything digitalized uh you can literally get apps on your phone where you can just do pop in what exercise you did what weight you did and then next time you come back to that um that split again, it'll tell you what you did the week before. Jane, just give me a sec. I'm just going to talk to the person that's listening. <laughs> this boy here is dyslexic. He can't even read his own <laughs> If he can write down what he's doing, it makes sense, but make progress. So can you. Sorry. 
<laughs> Great banter. <laughs> I love getting abused for singing a Wednesday morning. <laughs> that wasn't abuse. You were the shining light. You were the example there, mate. If you can do it, so can anyone. You are the star <laughs> of the show. <laughs> oh, so. um, right, well, on the you know opposite end of that, uh, there is going to be the temptation by a lot of people to do everything at once. Uh, any tips to avoid injury? Um, avoiding injury, so obviously a massive thing for obviously avoiding injury is significant recovery. So yeah. if, if you, now that you have the time before gyms open, most of us probably aren't back to work or are, are working from home. I know I'm back to work tomorrow um, in lifestyle. But, um, you know, focus on trying to get like, you know, enough sleep every night, get yourself in a good routine, focus on, you know, active, active recovery. So getting your steps in, uh, whether it's going for a cycle or even getting a, just going for a walk in the evening, uh, getting the blood flowing and that'll help the doms when you do come back to, to train again anyway. Um, and yeah. focus on good nutrition. So obviously try and get, you know, your high protein. So 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein, depending on the body and depending on the muscle mass. I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, depending on how much muscle you hold and stuff like that. So make sure you have enough protein in, obviously, because protein is um, the main the main growth. Um, what am I trying to get out? So yeah, 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 basically. So it'll help you grow more muscles. So basically, when we're training, you're breaking down little muscles. Um, yeah. Or you're breaking down your muscles, tearing little muscle fibers. And what the protein does is it helps build them back stronger. That's how you get bigger muscles um so like they would be two of the main things i two or three of the main things i would definitely be looking towards to like optimize recovery and prevent injury obviously don't over over push yourself as well so take it easy yeah. for don't be an idiot again yeah, don't, don't try <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go back to the gym and yeah we were we were actually in the gym two weeks ago and uh, to get one of our mates to take some pictures you know for the for, for the Instagram yeah, from yeah. That, um, and he had deadlifted in uh, what was it like three months oh. uh, four months at the time yeah and decided to try and do the one max and oh, probably hasn't <laughs> he did get a PB <laughs> but he had more sense and was now in a wheelchair for the rest of his life so <laughs> Um, yeah, don't give your boy. Remember your boy over in Dubai trying to do one rep max and incline bench and tore his pec strip clear, clean off his clean off the bone. Oh, yeah, this is Ryan yeah. something. I don't even know what his name is. Yeah, so, well, yeah, it was yeah flex. We were, oh no, I can't even remember who it was training Ryan, with. Ryan, anyway, uh, Ray, yeah, but the man we was training with him. Who was it? Sorry. Harry Wheels was training with him. He was Harry, the yeah. scariest thing of that was him just bicep curling the bar off of him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty deflating as it is. But, um, look, you, you mentioned obviously sleep and steps there, which have a massive impact on your training. Uh, trouble is my word, words there, but uh, the quality of your training anyway. So yeah. you're saying at the moment you're getting somewhere between 10 and 16,000 steps. That's, that's a lot of steps. And, I mean, right. your knee legs aside, how are you fitting them into your routine? Do you have a structure as to how many steps you get in the morning, the evening? How do you actually get those steps in? It's usually the same really every day. So when I um when I get up in the morning, I'd, I I weigh myself every morning. So I weigh myself, get a shower, um, and then right. walk, walk with Lauren to work. So if I walk to work down to Panama and back to the gaff, it's about um 3,000 steps. So then during the day, if I was training, I'd obviously walk back to where I'm training and back, which is about another 4,000 steps. And then plus, I don't, I don't generally um, track like the steps I'm doing in the gym because like, you know, you're training there. So I would, uh, huh? Uh, how do you manage not to track them? Do they not I say, I, if I was, if I was training, so at the minute I'm wearing the aura ring. So it's basically right. for like recovery. So it tracks your sleep more so than, it tracks your sleep and your steps, so I just take it off and train them. Um, before I had the Apple Watch and I just took it off because I don't really care about what calories I burned during a session yeah. because they're 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 wrong anyway. Like all of them trackers are wrong anyway, so um, yeah. I just I just don't go by them. Um, I don't see the point. <laughs> so that's how I just don't track my steps when I'm training. Um, 
Sorry? That's commitment, mate. That's commitment. I track every single step that I do. <laughs> I don't go downstairs for a pee in the middle of the night without a watch on it. Um, basically then we walk back um, do a few bits around the house so obviously doing like hoovering and stuff around the house trying to keep it clean and um, then I'd sit down and do some more work and then I'd walk down and meet Lauren um, when she's finished work and then walk back so that's straight up what's that that's 10,000 steps alone just walking her to work walking back walking to the gym back walking back to her work and back so that's literally 10,000 steps alone so anything above that is surplus calories yeah, burned you're literally getting the steps in without having to actually go any plan. You don't actually, yeah, you don't actually have to go for a walk. <laughs> it essentially yeah. is neat and it's like non exercise activity thermogenesis in this yeah. element, but you don't actually need to go walk. You're just making subconscious choices to yeah. walk places instead of like you don't drive anyway. So you have I can't wait to see the amount of steps I do now because, like, we're, I'll be back and work next or well, tomorrow and you know, we'd be walking up and down the steps or in, in work and, you know, restocking the shop and stuff like that. So I'd say I'd be up like 25,000 steps. I remember like last summer, or the summer before, one of the girls and I had used to have a competition and she used to run 5K before she'd come to work. And we'd both oh. be like 26, 27,000 steps a day. We'd have, you know, you can add yourself, you can add like uh, friends on Fitbit. Yeah. And we used to have a competition to see who would have the most steps in the month. <laughs> <laughs> it is, listen, it's great to have those competitions. I used to challenge my clients to see if they can beat us to steps each day, and like you get some crazy numbers. But jobs where you are on your feet like that, I remember when I used to work in lifestyle back day and again, there would be like you'd average even like a four or five hour shift, you'd be averaging 15, 16,000 steps. Just Especially if you're working in footwear because you're constantly running in and in out serving customers. If you're standing on the yeah. table, maybe not as much because you're just standing on your feet, you're not really moving much. but Apart from that, like, yeah, but look, those the, the, the actual calories that you burn, or the yeah, the calories that you burn from moving more is massive. So, actually, like, if you're doing 10,000 steps, then you're burning anywhere between three and 700 calories. Do yeah. a bit more than that, then that makes a massive difference. So, you can imagine how much more you can be nearly double. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, you can imagine how much more just come from. <laughs> Yeah, like office workers like average what four or five thousand steps a day, six if they're pushing it. Like they, they actually can't get away with eating as much without storing it. So that's why it's really important to get them in if you don't have an active lifestyle. Um, I'm I'm finding not being in the gym right now, um, that having to actually go and plan walks and stuff is until you actually get in a structure, it's very difficult to actually think how do I get like I'm doing between 12 and 16,000 right now. How do you actually get that in? So I try and get as many as I can in the morning so that I'm not looking at my watch in the evening going, and being like, oh, shit, yeah. That happened to me. Uh, the I was like, I have to get another thousand steps in. So I literally walked out of my apartment and literally did like a circle uh, around by the guard of arcs and back. And I was like, uh, I came back and it was 10,000 in one step. So I was like, that's me doing on my way to bed. <laughs> <laughs> When I moved in here, I didn't have a good routine to it. I was trying to get my steps in, and I ended up just walking up and down the room, left and right. And there's no lights, no street lights around here, and I left it very late. And I wanted to watch, I think there was like, it was Real Madrid were playing, and I was like, nah, I'm watching this. But I just kept on walking up and down the room. And then so you go in the iPad walking. <laughs> Mate, it was terrible. We, don't, we didn't even have blinds on the windows at this time. So the light was on. And they looked from the outside and they went, that guy should be walking around in circles. There's something wrong with him. They'd be right. But I got my steps in. Fantastic. <laughs> well, kill me. The, other, the, the other thing that you mentioned was sleep. So... Yeah. Uh, obviously we, we know sleep's important we'll not get into how important sleep is but is there any tips that you have on improving your quality of sleep recently i've started to like so obviously having a good like pre-bed routine is good so obviously like, doing, you know, doing the same things um pre-bed so like every night i have blue lock blue light blockers whether they work or not i don't know i find the work for me it's it's probably a mental thing um but I stick a moment and watching the TV just to limit the amount of blue light going in because apparently it ha- uh, blue light disrupts your circadian rhythm, which basically helps you fall asleep and helps your sleep quality. Um, yeah. I then uh, reduce, so in like our bedroom and 
and even in our sitting room, I have like we've we've lamps, but we have low low watt uh, bulbs in them, so they're a little bit darker than what they they would be, you know, in say the hall or somewhere like that. Because the darker the room is, your body starts to tell itself that it's going to sleep. Uh, the yeah. brighter it is, it starts basically waking itself up because it think because because it thinks it's daytime outside. Uh, so even just changing the the bulb wattage is um really really decent for helping sleep. Then, like I do take some supplements, so I started taking the Stram Support Max Neuro. It has like ashwagandha and stuff, and it helps you relax. Um, because how are you, how are you finding that? Mate? I've seen a few people. Yeah, no, I like it. See, because I'm doing a lot of work at home at the minute. You know, you're const- I'm constantly sitting on a laptop, typing up like plans, um, client check-ins. Uh, I I spent last week trying to build a website. Um, you should have seen me. I was <laughs> pulling my hair out. Right? I'm not. I'm not good. Like I did business in college, and we did like like the basics of how to build a website i couldn't even use a template on wix i was youtube <laughs> and, um but um i find it's hard to turn off sometimes you know because like sitting here right now i'm sitting in the sitting room and this is where i do all yeah. my work so yeah when i'm sitting here in the evening i'm nearly like i should be working yeah that sort of way um so i find it helps me sit but like basically relax and calm in the evening so i literally like it's unreal it tastes lovely i just mix it with water it just it tastes like mangoes it's like you're just yeah. drinking like an orange drink, an orange juice or like tropical juice. I put a wee bit of ice into it as well. Um, and then basically before I go to bed, I take ZMA, so zinc and magnesium, uh, vitamin D and vitamin K. And I take melatonin as well. So yeah, uh, basically like the vitamins are more so just for like, you know, natural health. We should be taking vitamin D anyway because we're just we're li- we live in Ireland and there's like very little sun. Um, it's a sun. It's a sun. You're saying you're saying that mate today the sun is melting. It's, it is about four. No, the sun is melting. It's like it isn't it. <laughs> um, ZMA basically just um, it's always good to have you know the so zinc and magnesium in the system. Uh, it helps with recovery, um, cramp and stuff like that. Um, and then what was it about melatonin? So it's naturally produced in the body Um, it helps you it's sort of the hormone that helps you fall asleep so I take like I probably take too much I take three milligrams <laughs> so I take three tablets uh, before I go to bed each night Um, and like within 15 minutes I'm gone and then I put three drops I I, I was looking for the spray but it's lavender lavender yeah. spray, spray if you can get it but I just get the lavender drops and I just put like two three drops in my pillow yeah and they just help you calm and you know um fall asleep but like even tracking my sleep on the on the ring i get like three hours of deep sleep every night (laughs) (laughs) which is like way more than what most people would um whereas my rem is quite is is quite low like i only get like 25 minutes of rem each night yeah that's you still get it there's some people who don't get any rem sleep yeah Um, you you said it yourself there your bedtime routine is fairly extensive like you don't Well, obviously you don't have to go into that detail, but like I just, I just, I, it's just me. I, I'm a perfectionist, and that's the way I do it. So, no, hundred percent, mate. It's good, to, good to know how you do it. And as you said, your quality of sleep is quite high as a result. Yeah, of it. But, I'm asleep by like I be in bed by. See, like I was watching the Real Madrid match last night, so I was asleep. I probably went to bed about quarter past ten. I was asleep by quarter to eleven, and then I was up at half six. Yeah. So half six, seven o'clock. That's the same every yeah. night. You must have been quite tired last night because there's man sitting PSG playing last night, not me Real Madrid. But oh, sorry. Are they playing tonight? Uh, Real Madrid are playing tonight. Yeah, yeah Chelsea. Real Madrid, Chelsea. And, our, and then yeah. Arsenal's tomorrow too. We're going to come back. We're going to come back. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I'm only interested in the big leagues, mate. I'm not interested in the <laughs> Where's Celtic? <laughs> uh, moving on. Um, <laughs> On on, uh, on supplements, supplements, mate. Uh, people are obviously going to be turning their attention towards the gym, and like a kid going back to school, they want to go back with the best of gear. Um, oh yeah. What supplements, if any, do you recommend for getting back into the gym? What would be worthwhile having? Um. So you know, if you if you struggle to get your protein in, obviously whey protein is always an option. Um. Some some of them can be like fairly harsh in the stomach like I can't actually my like my shits are horrible when I take my protein uh, protein wow. 
it just it just irritates my like my stomach um so I moved away from that and I just started taking like more like isolates so it's basically just more refined it's easier for your body to, body to digest uh, it's just pure protein like um and then uh creatine would be the two big ones basically and then obviously like with your multivitamin your zinc and magnesium and if you wanted to if you find like it was hard to relax then I'd say go for the strong support max you know, uh, the pm one yeah. that's really good I I, yeah. I like I have about two weeks now and I actually do really like it yeah and in terms of obviously protein whey protein um as a whey protein, whey protein yeah, you have, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. um do you think that everybody needs to get whey protein or you, what would you, you you definitely don't need it. Um, like if you, I would, I would, supplements are, you know, if you struggle to get something from food, then you should supplement it in. That's like the actual definition yeah. of supplement is to like bring it in if you're, if you're deficient in it. Um, so, <laughs> so if you're deficient in protein, the easy way to get protein in is just throwing a scoop of protein into it, you know, where um yeah. or a scoop of whey protein into a shaker and drinking it whatever or adding it to like your greek yogurt or your porridge in the morning or your cream of rice if you're a cream of rice head um <laughs> I'll, I'll do that right i'll do that right next time instead of having um, it with my <laughs> right, yeah um but like it's just an easy way to, to to get it in if you are struggling to get it in but you're much better off getting it from like you're much better getting it off from full Natural sources, sources yeah. special sources like chicken, uh, eggs, meat. Because uh, along with along with all the the wee voice crack there, <laughs> along with all the uh, additional like vitamins, and minerals that come in actual meat as well. It's yeah. just it's better absorbed by the body. Yeah, I mean no profiles, so yeah. higher. Yeah, exactly. Sources, but um, yeah, I think people sometimes prioritize like supplements as the game changer, like the building block to the pyramid of their, their, their progress. Whereas an actual fact, if you actually just make sure that your nutrition is fairly spot on, that your training is again structured the right way and you're not eating like an asshole, then yeah, like if, you're not eating McDonald's, if you're not eating McDonald's three meals a day, like you'll be grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know hundred percent. I went I think I went four years without it actually happening any like protein like I, I didn't use a protein supplement because i was just again most yeah. of my meal eating i just naturally quite like meat. have you seen um, my supplement press like the amount of stuff i just i just like buying supplements and having and trying new things and trying new flavors and stuff and yeah. sure even i get it, like like i some of the stuff that i don't like i just keep to one side and i never really get rid of it and then whenever kyle comes i'm like here i have stuff for you <laughs> and i just slide them all over to him <laughs> Listen, I, I, I love coming to your house. It's like, oh, do you want this? And I'm like, I always bring my big backpack just, just, just to make sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, like supplementation, it's it's not the most important thing. I know even when I started a gym, like even even two years ago, like two, two years ago was the last proper cut I did. I remember the first thing I did was when I decided I was going to cut I went onto my protein and I bought a five kilo bag of vanilla whey. And I, and I probably would still have that today if I didn't like move out of home and stuff like that. So obviously I moved in with my girlfriend um, and since then. Um, and I'm pretty sure when I moved out, that bag of protein was still there. So it's probably in the bin now somewhere. <laughs> uh, fair. Um, the only other thing that I would probably say is a worthwhile supplement to have is caffeine. Um, oh, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. I I, I yeah. just it so much now I don't even I don't even look at it as a supplement like yeah no well, that's the thing like you, you don't actually have to look at it as a supplement you get like in tablet form or um yeah something you buy you can physically have black coffee in the morning if you're trying to lose a bit of weight you can cut yeah. calories for that yeah. kind of in the morning <laughs> yeah 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 black black coffee kind of monster you've got a bit of caffeine there so that will just help blunt your rate of perceived exertion, which means that you're not going to feel as strenuously hard done by when you do exercise. And then it also helps you use fat as an energy source. So caffeine for the win, um, not advocating too many cans of monster. <laughs> sponsor us. <laughs> sponsors. Uh, mate, actually on that question, we just had a wee brain thought there. I took up a poll 
yesterday because they've also done away with the orange monster, the MVP. Is in Europe, what, what's, what in your opinion is the current best monster? Best monster. Um... I'm gonna so I'm gonna give you two answers, right? Because I I, I obviously ordered I ordered you a crate of like three Ds, the Thor's energy drinks. I can't remember the name of it. And uh, Rain and Monster, which Rain's Monster owns Rain. If you didn't know that, I didn't. I actually didn't know that. They, no. they own that, and Coca Cola owns Monster. If you I know that. Know. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, three D, the blue three D is class. Right. Yeah. It's. But it's not, it's like the price of two cans of monster. So yes, um I'm a big fan of the red, the red monster. The red monster. The red, the it's, it's it's red, white, blue in monster, in my opinion. The new blue and the mango one. So you can't you can't leave the you can't leave the white one out of your top three. I, I, I don't know, mate. Do you know what it is? I don't think it's like so it. controversial. <laughs> no, mate. The white one seems to be most people's go-to. But see, because so many people like it. It's because it's almost popular. Know. That's why everyone goes to it. And I haven't tried any other one, but it is still one of the best. I, I'd agree. I had the red one for the first time in a while when I was doing my reviews. And actually, you know what? I went and I was like, the red is very it's nice. It's like. different about it. It's, yeah. just, it's refreshing. It's fruity. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's strawberry or something, isn't it? pomegranate strawberry something like that I just basically oh, yeah. mate it's never seen a strawberry or pomegranate in his life it's all chemical based <laughs> anyway so the flavouring is not overly important but yeah it's apparently meant to be something like that um, the orange I don't know what monster we're thinking but they've had a nightmare I was almost thinking about boycotting them I still can't believe that they brought out the, they relaunched the yellow one and they got rid of the orange one did they, re- did they relaunch the yellow one? The the yellow one? one? Yeah, they relaunched the citrus, citrus one. And, it, and it, it tastes just like someone squirted a lemon into your mouth, like it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> With the eye water. Yeah. yeah. It's horrible. Like the orange one just tastes like Fanta. Or clover. Yeah. clover. Like it just tastes like orange. So if you're an orange it's man. Funny. I don't even like Fanta that much, but see when it came to that monster, I just, every time I'm like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, well, fair enough. Um, walk into, you'd walk into the shack and you'd see you, at like a throne of monsters stacked up each other. You're painting a bad picture of me now. Uh, well, speaking of bad pictures and me drinking things, the pubs are going to be open the same week as the gyms. So the big question is, the people of Ireland, how do they balance sustainability with the gym versus the sitch? Like, we're not all elite athletes, so you can obviously, we're, we're well able to balance both. It's not like you can't get results and go out at the weekend and drink ahead of yourself. Yeah. Um, when you are drinking, though, you do make some silly decisions. I know when I used to go out on a mad one, I used to order a large um, Texas barbecue to my house from Domino's. And yeah. I'd go over and I'd meet the delivery man outside Domino's and hop in the car and give him an extra five to drop me home. That's it. That's <laughs> that's a life. That's a life hack. That's a man's game. That is. <laughs> um, and then I'd end up falling asleep with the pizza on top of me. Like I wouldn't even eat any of it. Um, Did you the morning? Or? Yeah, because I was hung over the yeah. bed, and then I'd feel worse after it. <laughs> but mate, that, that that's making some good decisions for a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> don't recommend it if you're like trying to lose a bit of weight but you know like it's it's just it's just like you know you have to let loose once in a while fair enough yeah. i don't drink that much you'd be a little bit more of a a drinker than me but um uh, i feel like i'm more of a takeaway person so when i do go on the drink i end up ordering a shit ton of food and trying to stuff my face and i'm like i wasn't even hungry so why did i order this and you're just eating excess calories for no reason you know when you're drinking yeah, but I don't think under the influence of alcohol it made anyone more adherent to a diet. Nobody ever got better sticking to a diet yeah, than exactly. drinking alcohol, did they? No. I remember actually a post. I remember I was, walk- I think I was walking to work like two years ago, or a year ago anyway, and I saw one of your posts and it was like, I left the pizza in the oven last night when I was on the sesh. Oh. <laughs> and, Jen was pure- <laughs> and the thing was pure black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looked like some space. I am. Um, I was staying in Belfast at the time, me and Jen were, it was the first, we were actually, I was doing 
a bit of dieting at the time. And then that was the kind of first weekend that we let loose. We went to Belfast and we decided we had the apartment. Instead of getting takeaways, we had an oven there. So we, we bought pizzas, thinking we were clever. Came yeah, back from yeah, the money, you know. Put the pizza in the oven. I woke up at like half four in the morning to the fire alarms going off. <laughs> Went out in the apartment. I mean, it looked black. Like, I mean, you couldn't see Covered from the smoke. smoke. And then I opened the door and this like meteor of a pizza was there. And I was like, shit. Uh, I, I thought, yeah, I thought I was going to jail that night. <laughs> I'm actually going to Belfast the first week in June. My sister got to say uh, right away. I don't know what hotel it is, some hotel in Belfast. So we're gonna go up and do a wee, wee bit of shopping. Yeah, it's nice for some yeah. going now to to, oh, to yeah. resume. Um, remember, it's mad that like literally only across the border in Uri, like it's only a 15 minute spin from a dock that everyone's back in gyms and the pubs are open and everyone's going mad. Like Yes, I know it's in a lot of ways I quite like to see the fact that we 20 minutes up the road that there's some normality resuming because we yeah. can't continue what we're doing. I suppose we could always move, we could always move to New York, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, it would probably work for the two months and we'd feel like legends and then all of a sudden we'd open up down here and it'd just be a pointless move. Yeah. Um true. But uh, in regards to people going to pubs, nights out, restaurants, uh, I think it would be fairly harsh for anyone at this point to deprive people of having a social life because we I have we haven't had one to year that deprives that long it's not a fault of the people that the government has decided that the gym wasn't a necessity during the pandemic that's what it is uh, necessity but retail is more of a necessity than your 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 physical health and some people uh, have health as well Maybe I just a couple of PTs. We are not going to change yeah, anything. So we, 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 don't, we don't know anything. We don't we don't know it, but we'll deal with the facts as they are. So the government has decided that obviously the gyms are the last thing to open along with the pubs. And uh, again, it's unfair to deprive anyone of a few nights out or meeting up with their friends. But um obviously if you are wanting to make a change with your body health fitness, uh it is going to involve some form of measuring or managing uh, both. So this whole mentality of you can eat whatever you want and still achieve what you want, that works on a very basic level. But if you're if you're talking about does that actually work long term, no, because realistically you're going to have to be fairly clever about your food and drink choices. Yes, you can drink. I. I've dieted for now nine weeks, ten weeks in a row, and I have been on the sesh most weekends. <laughs> about the sesh. Uh, calories. <laughs> yeah, look, like, again, I, I was probably one of the person who objected most to having to be meticulous about counting calories and um, looking at every part of your diet as a, this needs to be managed. But it's actually funny, when you come up with a good structure and routine how much you can actually do and live a normal life without uh, impacting your fitness goals and i think that's something that we need to kind of embrace a little bit more it's not something you do forever but when you are looking to achieve some form of fitness goal having some measurement of what you're doing definitely is beneficial because otherwise it's just guesswork as we said though for the start uh, getting back into the gym and exercise and probably going back to work for most people your movement's going to be higher you're going to get some new beginnings and your again your femogen rate is going to be a good bit higher because of the amount of moving that you're doing so uh, you probably will get away with eating and drinking more it should compensate for the fact that you can get away with eating out for your mates but that's my two cents on it yeah even if you are right and you are trying to be a little bit stricter on yourself for the people that do want to, you know, achieve, like lose a lot of fat because we are coming into the summer. Uh, there is a yeah. few can do it. So obviously like, you know, diet mixers and spirits stay away from the cider. Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the cider light maybe. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's a different podcast altogether. Anyway, go on. 
so stay on the stay on the, the diet mixers and um the low, like the spirits so obviously they're generally more low in calories as well um there's less obviously there's zero calories in a diet mixer um yeah than you having like a normal coke have like maybe a pepsi max because pepsi is better than coke um <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um even you know try to if you're a big guinness drinker or something like that and you usually have 10 pints of guinness and then you move on to the whiskey just maybe have three pints of guinness and then move on to the whiskey do you know just yeah. making some shortcuts here and there um but i'm pretty sure nobody's going to be able to drink 10 pints and then move on to a whiskey when we get back to it <laughs> and to be honest i think there's maybe a lot of people who have been kind of training in the house in the sense oh, of yeah, training training. About- how much alcohol they can drink on a weekly basis in preparation for the pub's opening. Yeah, they're prepping hard. <laughs> they're prepping hard. Um, yeah, cool, mate. We'll, we'll, leave the, we'll leave the sustainability versus the there. Um, there's going to be, obviously, a few weeks' time the gym is open. What exercises are you looking forward to doing the most? If you mention a fucking Smith machine, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get incline, uh, incline reverse reverse banded bench, please. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to have a photo of you in the gym and in the shack and just say you're not allowed in. This man's not allowed. In. So that's a carry on you're going to be at. Um, I don't know, right? So recently, I started. So I, obviously, I was training like a lot of like you know strength movements over the last like eighteen months or so around that time. Um, yeah. and then I, my, my favorite was squat, obviously, because it was my strongest. Um, yeah. I think I got to two or five for one or something like that around that. Anyway, I can't actually remember, but, uh, every time I went to train, I felt like I was going to shit my spine out. So yeah. it's some, sometimes it's enjoyable. Sometimes it's not. And I start, we, I started doing some, uh, pendulum squats recently and I Could actually explain them quite enjoyable. Can you explain what pendulum squats are? So basically, like it's it's a machine, it's a machine squat. So you have um the but the, the, so you there's gonna be pads on your shoulders, and the it works as basically like you know, if you think of like a grandfather clock and you in the pendulum swings like that, yeah. Uh, so it's it starts in like a an upwards L position, you yeah. stand in underneath and you have a platform to put your feet, and basically you just squat down into it um and back up focuses a lot more on the quads not that i need quad growth or anything like that but no um i should probably work a little bit more on like lion hamstring curls or something like that but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know maybe uh, some, maybe some phase pulls for my rear delts <laughs> fair enough um so what's, your, what's, what's yeah. gonna be your favorite mate i'm i've had dreams about things that I've never done in my life. Like I'm genuinely looking. He's been he's been dreaming about the Smith machine. <laughs> <I'd>, yeah, <laughs> I'm not not disclosing that information. <laughs> no, it's, I'm I'm actually thinking about see because my training has consisted at the moment. Like I've bought a I don't even know if you can see that somewhere. See, there's like a squat rack there yeah. that's in front of me that I didn't tidy the room there, but. Uh, if you're listening to this while I'm watching it, I've just shown a wooden squat rack. Uh, but I paid for that after through the toys at the pram. Um, so I've got that and a barbell. But I've just been not limited, but like you're obviously thankful for what you've got. But like my training is mostly consistent of just barbell work for so long. But as much as I love barbell work and I can see the benefit of it 100%, it's kept me, to be honest, it's probably progressed me further than anything ever has. It's but, made the massive beast that you are today. Massive beast. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the monster that helped with that. Uh, but <laughs> no, no, like it's just looking forward to actually getting into doing things that are a little bit different. So I guess that borders on is exercise always enjoyable? And I'd say no, actually, there's a lot of times I really would like to have to do it on the day. Uh, the actual act of exercising or training is time consuming and sometimes it's not overly enjoyable because you are having to put stress on the body and sometimes when day to day life happens stress, extra stress isn't the thing that you want it's more so you look at the results of what it actually gives you so I think for the last little while being stuck in my house and in the, 
the little room that I'm in, it's not exactly the most motivating to go, oh, right, I'm going to take a scoop of pre-workout chain and I'm going to go through to the spare room and do like, and do, yeah. yeah. Like again, squatting and benching, it's like you, you, there's no room for error there because there's no safeties. If I if I fall in the plates, one the plates are going to smash, and two, more importantly, the floor's going to smash. Which means <laughs> I'm going to end up homeless because Jen's going to throw me out. But um, <laughs> tangent aside, uh, the I'm, I'm looking forward to just doing an incline uh, chest press. Oh, like an incline press. I think 2016. Slides or something. Get the chest pumping. <laughs> tell me, well, I'll tell you what, you write me a wee program and I'll get <laughs> some slides done. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to actually just doing things that are slightly different to barbell work again. I'll always keep the barbell work, but that and having a bit of atmosphere around again just... It's like, massive, isn't it? Yeah, like I can't wait to just hear some terrible tunes played yeah. by... I was going to name drop the local gym, but I'm not going to do that. But uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to hear some terrible tunes and then just watch the absolute shittery that goes on again. <laughs> uh, you've got people bicep around and squat. And, uh, <laughs> I, I can't wait for that to be my biggest problem again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, as, a, as a side to that, if you are still listening, and I appreciate if you're still listening, if you're going to go back to the gym, Please, please just re rack your fucking weights. <laughs> yeah, put them back, please. <laughs> yeah, it's not beneficial for you to do that. Imagine you are squatting a heavyweight or deadlifting, a fairly heavyweight, but you consider heavy. You leave the weights on that bar and walk away. You might not think twice about it, but what happens if a woman who's half your size has to come up to that? It's probably already quite. Or, you, or, or, a, or a man. Or a man, yeah, but look, it's. Again, I don't want to be accused of being sexist or assuming genders. So whatever you are, if you are already feeling intimidated about being in the gym and then you've had to walk up to some arsehole who's left his weights behind, it's not going to help anyone. So please, please, if you take anything from this, re rack your fucking weights. Extra gains, bro. Extra. Which leads us nicely on to our very last point. So, people with anxiety, people have been locked in their house, they've been staring at their phones, Instagram, Facebook, they've been seeing people who, again, during lockdown, there's some people who've done massive things and made great progress with, again, we'll keep it fitness related, but have done some great progress through lockdown, but not everybody has. So, for the people who have done little to nothing over lockdown and I'm getting back into it and feeling a bit of anxiety, what tips do you recommend? Um, so, well, I know talking from my own experience, like we've all had good times and bad times in lockdown. Um, like I qualified as PT in the first lockdown. So that's what, nearly a year ago now. <laughs> yeah. um, it's mad that I wouldn't even write in home workouts for the, for, the whole, for, the whole, uh, for the whole year that I've been a qualified PT. But, um, you know, when I'm in the gym or if Kyle's in the gym, like, we're not looking at anybody else. I honestly don't care what the person next to me is doing. I'm just focusing on myself. And I presume the vast majority of people are the same as that. So I wouldn't worry about thinking that if you went to a gym people are going to be looking at you because 99.9 percent .9 of them won't be uh they're all yeah. there for the same reason they're trying to get in good shape they're trying to either lose fat or gain muscle uh, and they're more focused on their own body rather than what you're doing yeah and um, if you do struggle with anxiety and stuff like that i'm not saying I, I don't i definitely don't struggle with anxiety or anything like that i'm probably the most easygoing person in the world um yeah but I did feel like a little bit like pressure there like a few weeks ago between just seeing everyone doing stuff on social media. And I was like, I need to take some time off. it. Um, so I didn't post for like maybe three weeks, I think it was. Yeah. And I started doing meditation twice a day. So in the evening time, I do 20 minutes guided relaxation, positivity meditation just on YouTube. Um, and then in the morning, I do 10 minutes uh, meditation just to wake up. I feel like it helps a lot. Um, it helps clear out any negative thoughts you know and helps you focus on yourself i haven't told anybody that actually yet so that's a that's a that's a new I, one. I was just going to say it's this meditation just a code word for pornhub 
Twitter. <laughs> 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 yes. No, it's some it's some random young one chatting in my ear saying, breathe, breathe. <laughs> feel, 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 feel your muscles in your legs, relax. See it, see it, yeah. uh, Stress go. <laughs> that, that, that you call your daddy. <laughs> What <laughs> say, <saying>, Kyle? <laughs> That's the same. Yeah, no, yeah, no spot on it. I mean, I whatever, that. I mean, we're not going to judge here, but if that's for you, knock away. <laughs> Listen, if it helps, it helps. It reduces yeah. stress and anxiety. Again, yeah. I'm a bit of an advocate of it, but again, yeah. that's probably <laughs> a different podcast. Um, yeah, you touched on a very good point there, mate. Um, anyone who's doing better than you isn't going to be judging you like if many people that are doing again, yeah like again that's i said that you probably feel as well i'm not the type of me go to the gym but we're either focused, so focused on what we're doing ourselves there's a good chance that we're just trying to be as effective as possible and try to get it done so we can get up the road so uh the the last thing we're going to be doing is judging someone else who's trying to better themselves everybody who goes to the gym in some sort of capacity is trying to better themselves. So um, I always say, write down, or go in my plan, so you know what you're doing. So that takes out the, the thought process and the emotion of wandering around, try to find where you're going next, what you're doing, see if things are free. Go in with a set plan so you know exactly what you're doing, where you're going. Um, if you've got exercises on that plan that you're not entirely comfortable more confident about YouTube's obviously a great uh, a great source that you can use for free. But most gyms will have fitness instructors and personal trainers that can give you a hand. Um, go with friends. A job, so don't feel like they're uh, you're putting them off. Like that's what they're paid to do is to help you. So. Yeah. Well, well, like when I used to be a fitness instructor for gyms, I used to love when people ask me questions because it got me doing more than just like cleaning treadmills and stuff. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it was great when there was a welcome distraction. So 100% approach someone and ask for advice because, again, it's a job. And then definitely go with friends helps. Uh, so you've got a support network there. Or if you want to get a bit more, not adventurous, but there is also classes as well. Classes seem to be a great one for kind of getting you involved. You don't always feel alone when you're doing them. They usually have quite a good kind of team feel to it. Yeah. So find, find a class that you like and don't be put off. Uh, there's a, there's another one that kind of comes up where people feel that they're not fit enough to do classes. Like you, it's, it's not about being fit. Any good class and any good instructor will be able to tailor class so that it's everybody in that class. So there can be somebody who's doing a couch to 5k in the class who's not done exercise at all in their life and then you can have somebody who regularly runs triathlons they both at the end of the workout should come out with a similar level of uh, value that comes out of the, the class exactly yeah yeah um, um. <laughs> well i think from my side of things i wrote down a few topics and that is me absolutely out of it and we're probably bothering on let's see that one well i don't know how long it's gone but it's probably up it doesn't say it. it says recording <laughs> it doesn't tell me how long right well cool well, like unless you've got anything you want to add we'll probably leave it there so. yeah no that that's 100 percent for me i actually really enjoyed that this morning different than the old podcasts because oh, listen. Yeah, go on. You, you weren't pissed. <laughs> a, you know what? It's a strange experience. I actually make an the start. So the old podcasts were, were good. They were what we were, were kind of doing at the time. Uh, but they just weren't the direction we wanted to go. It was like a Star Wars Christmas special. It <laughs> had the characters that we all wanted. It just didn't have a storyline or direction. It was so, like that for who? <laughs> yeah, um, Unlike the Star Wars Christmas special, you can't fucking watch them anymore because they're gone. They've disappeared. If you were lucky or I'm unlucky, sure, exactly. yeah. If you might even make a YouTube lucky. channel. <laughs> yeah, you can get the podcast onto YouTube. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're moving up in the world, but uh, the yeah, we're, we're taking the podcast in a new direction because we wanted to give a little bit more value than just us sitting, drinking, having chats. Which again, 
It was a good ramble spot. It's not the best one. Away. You never know. I'm, yeah, I'm off the cans the pubs opener. <laughs> Birthday on Friday or Saturday, maybe that aside, uh, I'll be off the cans to the, the pubs open again. Thank you. Right. Well, look, I'm going to go and purchase myself some cream of rice and do it properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, hashtag mistake. I'll say <laughs> Yeah, you send the instructions. Um, <laughs> other than that, mate, that was good. Uh, you can how do we stop it? Okay, yeah.